Is that a Jocko Poppin? This is Jocko Poppin. Let me get my uh, increased focus, my balanced energy, and my memory support. This thing has zero all of those crash. in there? All it has the, zero crash. All, all in the can. It's all right there in a can. Oh, and it's keto friendly. How much keto is in this? Oh, we should talk about keto. We should talk about keto sometime, but not yeah. today. I don't want to talk about keto today. It's boring. Yeah. Uh, what I do want to talk about though is what has it been about. It's been a couple months since Steven started the What's Up Wednesdays on our Instagram, and man, that's generated a lot of um, a lot of questions, which is cool. It's a good way to answer them, and just to kind of preface this conversation as we're getting into supplements, and I want to talk about creatine. Uh, Because this thing's been around forever. And speaking of maybe being bored or whatever, it got a little boring there for a while, but there's some new recent research, I think, that has has come up. We'll come back to the creatine. But the whole What's Up Wednesday post, it's interesting because it's given us a, when we look at our our framework, our pillars that we, when we're coaching people through nutrition and lifestyle specifically, we talk about it on the show all the time, our Eat Squared Plus E. and, And that T in the Eat Squared uh, being specific to the type of diet people are on. And I, and I changed it a, a while back from targeted supplementation to type of diet because when I got to the targeted supplementation part, that's all anybody wanted to fucking talk about. Like they didn't want to talk about like the, the or eating proper calorie, you know, the right amount of calories. And Boring. The, yeah, macro, micronutrients, that shit sucks, that man. What do you mean? Like I, I should stop drinking so much alcohol and try to get better sleep and you know, get away from the screens at night and shit like that. No, no, no. Tell me what the supplements are. Yeah, like, what are you doing, ones. dude? Like, yeah, what, what, what kind doing? of shortcuts are we talking about? Uh, here, crazy. Right? Well, can we talk about those? Yeah, yeah that stuff. Uh, also, you know, just the, like, the willingness to spend money on pills and powders in order to maybe find a shortcut or the easy button or, like, the, the, the solution for that matter. So I love the What's Up Wednesdays because they're starting to, like, generate some conversation that I always like to have. I just got away from it because you, you, you got to get away from that for a second. We need to talk about, that's why it changed to the type of diet because the type of diet being like, what are you subscribing to? Um, are you subscribing to like keto, right? Or are you subscribing to carnivore? Yeah. Is it whole 30? Are we talking, you know, the different methodologies? Like, you know, are you intermittent fasting, restricted feeding times, you know? What diet tribe are you God a part of? damn, it would just... Yeah, there was just so many things I th- felt like we needed to get our arms around for people to understand what they were doing and how that was impacting all the other things. We d- we ultimately had to talk about supplementation, but I had to take it out of the acronym, you know, as a pillar yeah. for a while because it just seemed to be like that's the one everybody wanted to, you know, that was like the uh, the base that everybody wanted to base everything on. Was like, well, I'm taking my taking my supplements. Yeah, but you're. Anyways, so good, let's so I'll, let's talk about creatine today. Um, it's kind of been a a, a big. It's kind of made a reemergence in terms of popularity, um, which is funny. It, it is a little yeah, funny. Yeah. We were talking about that uh, just the other day. Yeah, it's, it's funny how things cycle back around. Something that if you've been around this industry for a long time, you're like, oh, creatine. And it's like full it's, circle. It's like water. Yeah. <laughs> no. It, 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 every time it comes up, there are some common questions that come up with it. Um, but just to kind of preface this thing, I mean, creatine from like a performance supplement perspective is one of the most studied things that's ever been yep. studied. Cre- uh, caffeine being like one of those other ones. There's a lot of, of research data, substantiated data and research now that it's really hard to argue. Uh, you know, initially there were a lot of claims and then, you know, with those claims come people, come the people that are always trying to make their specialized formulas. Mm-hmm. My creatine's better than yours. Mm-hmm. And we're past all that now, I think, but the consumer's may not have maybe caught up with all that. For, from an industry perspective, I think everybody's like, creatine is creatine. But it's pretty. It can be pretty valuable and pretty beneficial. And so when we look at like the people that we help, like going back to that eat square plus e, uh, whether your your focus is aesthetics, you know, and just looking better naked and looking good, uh, or it's performance for whatever that happens to be a hobby, a sport, you know, profession, whatever, or just health and longevity, creatine fits in, uh, and everybody can benefit by it. So. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to talk about uh, as, as uh, again, as overstated as creatine has been for so long. I kind of wanted to just talk about it, maybe not talk about it ever again. So <laughs> let's knock it out. Go ahead. Yeah. Give it, <laughs> give it one last go. Yeah, um, I think it's important because well, I think people have questions still. So, well, yeah. And I think uh, when, you know, when you say uh, overstated, I think that could be 
you know, maybe from the perspective, like I said, of somebody who's been in this industry for a long time, it's like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, of course, creatine. Yeah, it's like, that's old news. Um, but it seems like it's reaching a uh, more of the mainstream now and more people who, um, you know, are not as familiar with creatine are now kind of, are now posing the questions. And that's what we're seeing on the WhatsApp Wednesday posts. Um, we had discussed the other day and I saw some of the comments, um, <clears throat> particularly like, mothers uh, who are, mm -hmm. you know, concerned that their teenage son is taking creatine for high school football or, you know, whatever the case is. Is this safe for my son? You know, how, you know, how's this going to affect him, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I find funny about that? And this didn't really get brought up in that little discussion we were having. They'll, they'll come to Instagram to post that. But if you ask them, like, what are they eating? What is your kid eating for breakfast? What mm -hmm. time do they go to bed at night? You know, like oh, yeah. <laughs> talk about all the other things. They're like, oh no, it's, that's, that's fine. But the thing they're the most concerned about is the creatine, yeah. right? You know, the creatine that the five grams of creatine the kid's taking a day. Yeah, yeah. What the kid picked up at GNC versus the Fruit Loops you're serving him for breakfast. And funny. he's, you know, playing Call of Duty until one in the morning, yeah. you know. Oh. But but look, hey, I'm a parent, so I get it. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously the, the supplement industry doesn't have a really great name when it comes to, you know, selling efficient and effective things to people. And as a parent, I want to know, you know, I want to make sure my kid's not getting anything that's dangerous. I get that. I'm just saying uh, there's probably some other things you can be focusing on. The creatine's fine. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about creatine. Uh, well, I mean, as far as who can take creatine, man, woman, I would say from teenage all the way to elderly yep. and especially elderly. And I think in addition to um, that teenage population, um, an emerging group uh, that should be paying more attention to creatine consumption is seniors, is, uh, you know, adults, men and women uh, over 50. So this is the interesting part. And I think that's the reemergence that we're seeing right now. It's being talked about at a different level to different people. Obviously that drives conversation, that drives marketing, um, that drives sales. So I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing more of it, but yes, this, this whole new sort of market that's out there. I don't want to say it's new, just this emerging market of, of who's, who's it's being marketed to is interesting. I think we start then we kind of work our way backwards in terms of, you know, what it does. So why would somebody that's advancing in age or even a senior want to be taking what was always considered more of a, like a performance supplement? Yeah. For, for gym bros, uh, you know, trying to get, trying to get huge. Yeah. It's for gains, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Gains train. Um, uh, someone who is aging, um, a major factor in quality of life as we age is the ability to maintain muscle mass. Uh, the more muscle mass you're able to maintain, the more mobility you're going to continue to have, the more independence you're going to continue to have, uh, the more ability to continue pursuing, you know, hobbies that you enjoy. For example, just, uh, a, a, an old customer of mine, he was an avid golfer. He was a golf instructor, a guy probably in his late sixties, seventies in general, a pretty vibrant guy. Um, but he was, he was still very concerned with his ability to go play 18 holes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I introduced creatine to him and he was a little bit, uh, creatine. Uh, is that something that, you know, someone of my age should be taking? And I said, yeah, that's, that's exactly who should be taking this. This is going to keep you out on the links and keep you doing the things that you enjoy for a longer period of time. Yeah, so that's originally how it was, you know, was sold, right? It's like creatine, it's gonna help you with your gains, it's gonna help you volumize cells, it's gonna give you a little bit more uh, energy, it's gonna help you recover faster. And when I say give you energy, like in mid-workout, in, in mid-rep, like you may be able to- Cellularly. To, yeah, dig a little deeper. Yeah, a couple from, more reps. Up. Yeah, from an energy pathway. So let's, I mean, maybe we, without boring people, we just kind of talk about how it works. Uh, muscularly, and then we can talk about how it works, like neurologically. Yeah, the mental aspect, cognitive aspect. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an uh, the the cognitive aspect definitely a benefit for those who are aging as well. But as far as like the mechanism of action, how creatine works, essentially, uh, creatine works by boosting ATP. So ATP is basically the energy currency of your cells. It's produced by mitochondria. You know, if you remember from freshman year biology, the powerhouse of the cell. Right, right, totally. Uh, mitochondria. Um, and the chlorophyll? <laughs> and, yeah, the borophyll. <laughs> <laughs> More like borophyll. <laughs> I was like borophyll. Uh, so yeah, ATP basically powers all, all metabolic functions, uh, 
all of your bodily functions. Um, it's kind of the, the, the gasoline that makes you, makes your body go. But what about the gains, Stephen? <laughs> like what about the gains? Cause that's, that's why people were taking creatine. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of where the gains aspect comes in, um, when you're, uh, performing high intensity exercise, ATP is going to be depleted much faster. Mm -hmm. Uh, where creatine comes in is it basically, um, beyond, uh, a, basically a 10 second burst of, um, uh, of uh, exercise performance beyond that 10 seconds, your creatine usually is depleted and, or your ATP is usually depleted. Creatine comes in and provides kind of like, a, I call it like a NOS button, like fast and the furious. Really like, you hit that right. NOS button uh, when you're starting to kind of peter out and you get an extra, extra burst, two to five seconds, which is going to, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Jeff, a couple more reps, a little bit more volume, more volume you put in more stimulus, so on and so forth. Yeah. And so old gains. yeah, the, the, the energy pathways, we've talked about energy systems and energy pathways here. You're talking specifically about the anaerobic system. So like a sprint or your set of 10 to 15 Protein or eight phosphates. Yeah. System. Your set of eight to 15 or eight to 12 repetitions or whatever you're burning through this, this energy system and that ATP when, as it's burned, turns into, it loses a phosphate, it turns into ADP or adenosine tri, uh, yeah. diphosphate from adenosine triphosphate. And that creatine phosphate system, specifically what your body has, not, and what it can, what it can, what it can produce, what it can utilize, and then what it can ultimately transport and make happen metabolically. It's a faster recycle, basically. Yeah, it can, exactly. Mm -hmm. It can make those dyes back into tries a little, a little, mm -hmm. little quicker uh, in some cases, and that's relative. Um, to who you are, what your training age is, you know, the, the intensity of exercise, lots of variables go into that. But at the end of the day, we know there can be a, a, a fairly uh, significant performance increase mm -hmm. to help during, let's just say, intra-set, intra-rep, yep. intra-sprint, and also on the recovery end or the back yep. end of that. And the interesting part about that is, is the whole process yields um, uh, some water, right? In the process, mm -hmm. right? So it actually creates, you know, in the burning of this process, there's, there's basically cell volumization that's happening there deep in, in the, in the muscle cell. And so you retain, you may be retaining a little bit more fluid in the muscle cell. That's not subcutaneous water. Yeah. That's not bloat water. However, we can talk to, about bloat yeah, and creatine here yeah. in a second, yeah. but in intracellularly, that's going to make you, your cells more volumized, your muscle cells more volumized and might might put on a couple of pounds, you know, you might put on a little bit of muscular density just through that fluid retention in and of itself on top of the, uh, the, the performance benefit that you're getting. And then obviously with more fluid that more and, and a little bit better circulation, processing nutrients in and processing nutrients out that, um, that whole process can be beneficial for muscle building, strength building, and, uh, even endurance. So mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, I mean, that's, that, that's the science lesson behind it, I guess. Yeah. I'm yeah, trying the, to keep it lame yeah, that mu yeah. The muscle cell hydration that stimulates growth signals in itself. So yeah, in addition to helping you do more work, creatine can also help reduce protein breakdown. It can also, uh, stimulate growth in and of itself, satellite muscle cell signaling, all kinds of fancy. Sounds nice amazing, stuff. right? I mean, it's like fucking magic. This is what we're talking about. So like, why yeah. wouldn't I want to be on creatine? Um, so Let's talk about some of the, the I don't know, maybe the side effects or some of the downsides that people have experienced. And also early protocols versus protocols. Now, sure, right? yeah, and maybe why and some of that, that was yeah. happening. Yeah, it's a really yeah. good point because how we were instructed to <laughs> originally take it. Let's go through a little bit of that history so people who haven't been made aware are now aware and those people that remember this can maybe get a little bit of insight as to why and how not to do it if they're trying to maybe reintroduce creatine into their, to their program. It's funny that that uh, this came up literally for me yesterday. I was uh, I was getting my hair cut, and uh, my uh, my barber he knows what I do, and he asked me. He's a fit guy himself. He asked me questions about nutrition, about supplementation, and he's like, "Yeah, man, uh, creatine. Um, you know, what do you think about creatine?" Uh, and he's maybe twenty five. He's like, "Yeah, so I'm going through a loading protocol right now. Um, how about that loading protocol?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, how about that loading protocol? Sounds rough. <laughs> um, yeah, so the 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 loading phase. I know when I first started taking creatine, this was maybe, yeah, 15 years ago. It was, you know, you got to load it. You got to take 
20 grams, grams a day. Yeah. yeah. 20 grams for a week in order to reach, you know, muscle saturation. Um, my barber, he was telling me, uh, he was taking 10 grams, which I was like, okay, I mean, you can get away with that. Um, but the bottom line is, it's just, it's not necessary for the vast majority of people. The loading phase is not necessary. Your body is producing creatine all the time. And you're also consuming creatine if you're consuming animal protein on a regular basis. If all you vegans yeah. out there, yeah, that's uh, creatine can be very, very, um, very, very beneficial for you if you're okay eating an animal derived product. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, if if you are following a, some type of plant based uh, diet, then a loading phase could potentially uh, be beneficial for you because you're. Uh, Muscle saturation of creatine might be Maybe lower, depleted, yeah. um, but for uh, you know uh, most people who are consuming animal protein, that that twenty grams is is just going to give you uh, the wicked mud butt. It's just yeah, uh, it's more yeah. or less. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go back to the bloat thing. I mentioned the bloating, like cell volumization versus bloating. Yeah, you get too much of that in the in the gut, man. It will it disrupt it that sucks. gut biota in a bad way, and that's what was happening to so many people. When and creatine was coming in all kinds of products there for a while, right? Because I mean, it's fucking magic. So put it into proteins, put it into your recovery drinks, put it into your ready to drinks and everything else. By the time you know you've done all that in your in your day, knowingly or not knowingly, you've onboarded twenty grams of exactly like fast acting liquid. Mm -hmm. And it just, what it does, it takes a lot of water to process the creatine in the digestive system in it so that your body's drawing in water. to your intestines. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> guess what? Yeah, it's, it's going to be probably pretty uncomfortable for you. And even, you know, still, still when you're putting that in there, that that does give the the body some, you know, body's bacteria something to work on or feed on. And it could, for some people, it could produce gas depending on how their, you know, their, um, their digestive system is operating. Let's just put it that way because... We know that can vary vastly from person to person. But you generally, if you're taking a recommended dosage, which it, to my my knowledge, it's still about five grams a day, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, for a long time there, they had dialed it back like, yeah, we don't need to load anymore. We got past that point. And that it should be between like five to seven or maybe five to eight grams a day mm -hmm. um, in supplementation, right? Not in, not including what your body's producing, what you may be getting from, from animal protein. So anyhow, yeah, that was the kind of the back end on the loading thing. You don't... so. Bottom line, is you don't need to load. It's really not necessary. No, it's it's gonna yeah, it's gonna cause more digestive discomfort than anything. Um, and yeah, as far as uh, people who might be a little, we can talk about this uh, a little bit more in depth. The different forms of creatine um, and how some people do have uh, digestive reactions to creatine monohydrate. There are certain individuals where they might want to try a different form of creatine, even if they're taking five grams a day, still bothers their stomach, still gives them diarrhea, uh, still causes uh, bloating or discomfort. Uh, so that's where maybe some different forms of creatine can come in and, and potentially be of, of benefit. So let's, let's swing back for a second and, and get beyond the benefits of say muscle, ma maintaining muscle mass and or building strength and muscle uh, we we know that those benefits are there, and it's in their their market. So there's no there's no real arguing or debating that 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 much anymore. Some people want to, but it's pretty much there. Let's 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 talk about this neurological benefit uh, piece uh, because I think that's really that's really important. And as you're as we're transitioning into this, I think it's also it's probably fair to um, to say like, if you are in better shape, you have more muscle mass, you are more active, you are, uh, you have the ability to go out, be social, be independent, take care of yourself. Neurologically, you'll probably be in a much better healthier position. Yeah. You'll probably be healthier. Yeah. Health, health, healthy body, healthy mind kind of thing. But let's, let's talk about some of the science behind the, um, behind the neural stuff. Yeah. I think that that's the area that I think is, is getting, uh, more fresh attention now. Um, and it, it boils down to basically uh, ninety five percent of of phosphocreatine, the stored form of creatine, is going to be stored uh, by your muscles, and the other five percent is stored by your brain. Your brain uses a gang of ATP. It's very energy hungry, um, and if your brain is not getting adequate ATP, it's not going to work as well. Um, so your brain uh, benefits from uh, creatine supplementation in that you you get that that NOS button for your brain in addition to your muscles. So uh, that that's essentially how it's going to serve uh, neurological benefits. 
Yeah, so as we're kind of circling this all the way back, talk about the triangle of awareness there, the performance, longevity, and aesthetics. And we've talked on this show and sort of introduced this concept of, hey, when you're supplementing, think about these three things, this triad that's been, is so important in function, performance, and longevity, that being uh, the gut, brain, and liver triad, you know, and how all those things operate together. And so we're hitting the brain piece with the creatine, mm -hmm. but you're also doing it through helping maintain that muscle mass and get you through your workouts and help you recover, which is all beneficial. All right. Mm -hmm. Obviously for brain health and then, you know, for total health and wellness. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we, when, if we're going to recommend a supplement, that's what we're, that's, those are going to be our, our, our basis for how we're, how we're making a recommendation, right? Does it serve one of those areas? Yeah. It, well, first off, what's your goal? Why are we doing this? And then secondly is like, is it supporting that, that gut brain liver triad in some way? And if so, how, and is there a chance that this could be messing something up for you if you're going to take this particular thing? I think it's a really good way for people to, to wrap their heads around, you know, supplementing and particularly targeted supplementation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these, these neural benefits are cool. And, and again, it's being a little bit more recognized. And so when you're looking at it, it's like, okay, so when should I take creatine? Right? Like when, when should I be taking it? I think is the next thing. Uh, do I take it on workout days? Do I take it in my recovery shake? You know, when do, when do I put it in? What's the, I mean, I can tell you what I think, but I'm curious to know what you think. Well, I mean, you can take creatine at, at different times. Um, in terms of workout days versus non-workout days, both both workout days and uh, non-workout days. Um, for me personally, and what I typically recommend uh, before you're working out, take it before you're working out because you're going to see acute benefits during your workout. Um, it can serve uh, recovery purposes as well. You can take creatine post-workout as well, uh, but I think it's going to be more beneficial uh, to improve your workout right then and there by taking it beforehand and preferably taking it with some form of simple carbohydrate. Um, that's going to help trigger an insulin uh, response that's going to improve the uptake of the creatine. So if there's any time to drink a sugary ass Gatorade or pineapple juice or something like that, be before, yeah. before your workout with creatine would be a good time. And then that, that, uh, you know, that insulin spike, that glucose spike is going to be put to use versus just hanging on as body fat. Yeah. So a couple takeaways. One is you got to you know, you should have it in your system all the time. This is something you want on every day. It's not something you do just on workout days. So, you know, a lot of people that take pre-workouts are finding creatine in their pre-workouts, or they only use, you know, their pre-work shake that has some pre-workout or stem, or maybe it's non-stem, some adaptogen nootropic type blend with protein and some simple carbs and, you know, maybe some other cell volumizers, if you will, uh, nitrix type yeah. pro. Uh, product or Pump whatever. Gains. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's where they're going to get their creatine. So if they're not working out, they're not taking their creatine. So it's not getting in there. Um, that can be problematic. Because uh, if, again, if you're not, you, you should have it in there all day, just like your vitamin D or any, any other sort of essential. Um, so for me, you know, when I think about taking it, it, timing's not really like a factor. It's just, I just need to get it in. Mm -hmm. And so when is the most likely time I'm going to do it? Like in what, and the most consistent way that I can get it in. And so I have a daily ritual, like every day, at least at one point, and sometimes it's after workout and sometimes it's, it's earlier in the day I, on occasion, I'll actually start my day this way. I have some type of a shake to, mm -hmm. cause I need to boost my protein intake. I've, you know, like a lot of people, I struggle to get meet my protein need on a daily basis through food. Uh, so I'm going to supplement. I have, you know, a shake that I call a protein shake, but it's got a lot of things in it mm -hmm. because it's ritualized. I'm like, well, all the things that I need to get that would be hard to get. Otherwise, this is a really good time for me to get it. So that's where my greens go. That's where my, you know, my extra greens, because I eat a lot of meat. Right. And, and I just want to make sure I'm, and I eat vegetables and I eat fruit too, but I eat a lot of meat. So, mm -hmm. um, when you're doing that, you you don't necessarily have room for all the servings and stuff. So I just, that's kind of my insurance, but that also comes with my nootropics. It comes with my adaptogens. Um, that's when I'm taking my, uh, 
every day. Like I, I don't, I do not have a problem taking my like essential capsules and, 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 uh, gels and those kind of things. That's not an issue, but that usually goes in at the same time I'm same drinking time, this. Yeah. The point of that is, is that's where my creatine's going. I just know I'm going to get it. And I take that every day, regardless of whether I'm working out or not. Uh, so ritualizing it and getting it in there somehow, I think is important rather than worrying about, you know, is it five minutes before the workout? Is it 45 minutes after? Where's my quote unquote anabolic window here? Yeah. That, yeah. yeah it, all that bullshit. Yeah. I think in, in general, that's a question that gets asked often. Oh, do I take it with food? What time? How? And that can serve to overcomplicate things. What I always recommend is whatever way is going to get it into your mouth most consistently. Yep. Um, uh, that's first and foremost versus uh, some sort of optimal timing. Yeah, you can always window. tweak down the line. Yeah, you, know you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. but Whatever just getting it in is remember. important. Yeah. yeah, getting in it's and you know it's usually mine's flavorless. Like it's just yeah. it's just an extra little scoop, five gram scoop that goes into all the other stuff that's going in behind the frozen fruit. And Hardly the, notice. Yeah, exact. It's not gritty. It's not again. Oh, it's flavorless. It used to be. Yeah, they used <laughs> oh, to God. used to be crazy. That was probably part of the whole the worst. gut gut issue yeah. thing when I when it first came out. I mean, it was it was. It was rough, rough, but who knows what else was actually in there. It yeah. smelled Don't bad, know. too. It <laughs> only smelled. Three rat turds per ounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, go, let's talk about the different forms because you brought that up and and uh, people will see it in different forms. And is that mm -hmm. even important, man? Uh, I mean, it's it's a case-by-case -case basis. I, I would say, generally speaking, creatine monohydrate is going to be the way to go for the vast majority of people. You're going to get, it's much more cost effective. You're going to get much more bang for your buck and you're going to get all of the benefits. Um, there are, uh, like I had mentioned, there are individuals that creatine monohydrate just bothers their stomach. Um, I think you had mentioned this in the past, Jeff. I yeah. overheard you saying that mm -hmm. it just bothers your stomach in yeah. general, even I, if you're just taking- it, any of it. Yeah, yeah even no. if you're just taking a- uh, you know, the, the standard five gram dose. Um, so the different forms, they, their claims, they all boast it's better, it's better absorbability and less digestive upset. Um, so that's your, uh, that's your creatine hydrochloride. That's your crealkaline or, or pH quote unquote pH corrected, uh, pH corrected creatine. Um, there's one, uh, called, uh, Magna power, uh, that's, Ma this sounds interesting. I don't know about this one. Magna power. Magna power. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> let me say that one. Magna power. Yeah, man. Uh, that, that's, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, like a magnesium creatine chelate, something okay. like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, creatine. If it's, if it's chelated, dude, it's, it's got yeah, the, yeah, there's extra ch chelation there. So it's, it, you know, it's good. Um, but the, the bottom line is that they all claim <laughs> to be more, you know, more absorbable. Your intestines absorb them more effectively, more efficiently, so on and so forth. Um, bottom line, these forms are going to cost about twice as much and they're not going to provide twice the benefit. Gotcha. Um, but when I would recommend them or when I have recommended them in the past is people who are just like, yeah, monohydrate just gives me the, gives me the Hershey squirts, man. I can't, I can't. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that's usually the, the chief complaint. I'm curious, Jeff, is that the same issue with you? And so, did, you, yeah, did you try like so I did the dosing loading, it at different? So I did the loading phase and all of that. And then I tried to pull back off of that and just make it like, it was like a daily shake. And I was going through, uh, I forget the name of them at the time, but they were like the marketing masters of supplements. Okay. And uh, it was like, you, you'd buy this, stack this, all, you know, all this, all this stuff. Bottom line is like I my gut was bloated. By the time you got all that it was stuff, just, in I you. just couldn't yeah. breathe. Like I couldn't brace my core. Right. Everything felt like ass. So I tried the uh, hydrochloric, and uh, that one was a little better, a little easier. But still, I had just like honestly gut. Um, it wasn't as bloating, but it just it was irritated yeah, in a sure. different way, and um, I did feel a little bit of uh, an increase in my lifting, but the digestive issues for me just didn't, it, it outweighed, you know? Yeah. So that's actually a good point. So um, it, it could be different for different people. Right. And so there, there's these other forms out there. If the typical monohydrate seems to be bothering you, maybe you try these other forms, but I, I don't find that to be typical for most people. For uh, most it's not. Yeah. For most it's not. So and what you're saying, Jeff, is it doesn't really matter what it is. My body doesn't like it, so yeah, it just is what it fan. is. Just is, is what it is for me. Gotcha. That's why I just eat a lot of red meat. <clears throat> but you, yeah, so that's the other way. Is like, yeah, if you're eating a lot of red meat, it's cho usually chock full of creatine. So um, fatty fish as well. Fatty mm, fish yeah. as well. Yeah, which are all things that we've talked about on the show as being important. Good for, for you in general. Overall health. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be haters out there. They're going to be 
that's wrong. I, I don't fucking care. Um, the, You're wrong. But you were talking about what you were feeling, like the results. Yeah. So let's talk about like what people may feel once they start taking creatine. And so this could be like, so if you're that more of that senior person, it's like, I'm just looking for, for, for mental cognition and, you know, to, and preservation here. Um, we've talked about this, like with adaptogens and nootropics, do not expect like this epiphany to wake up one day. Like the, what's the movie? Limitless. Limitless. Yeah. Where you can basically see into the future and learn how to, you know, you know, I don't know, code and, you yeah, you play, suddenly play play thirty minutes. minutes. Or so. Yeah, all those yeah. those memes when you have like calculations and formulas yeah. floating around your head. A beautiful mind. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful mind. But, but what I mean, <laughs> what are some of the general reports that you heard from clients? You know, when they start taking the creatine about with regard to that the neural neural piece. Uh, it's not going to be, again, like you said, it's not going to be super dramatic, but uh, just mental clarity, processing speed, yeah. memory, mm-hmm. mood. Um, really all of the things that are associated with better cognitive function in general. Um, Less so, depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mood elevation, um, you know, uh, fluidity of, of speech, yeah, and you know, mental clarity. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's, that's relative, right, to, yeah, to it, who it, you are. Yeah, it's fairly <laughs> subjective. So they've done studies yeah. in multiple times, like every time they'll do a, a double-blind study controlled and every time, and it's a small percent, but the people that are taking creatine have better, uh, what is it, working memory and recall mm-hmm. uh, than the other group. Yeah, so it's it's it, it might be tough for you to to me- to measure it, right? But mm-hmm. you you know, if you're around your family, you haven't seen them, or like I, I gotta be honest, like so, so I'm around my dad sometimes, and um, like some days he's just fucking switched on, like he's yeah. super sharp, and other days I'm like, he seems fatigued. You know, like whatever that maybe he doesn't he didn't sleep well, or maybe he was out in the shop, you know, longer than he should have been, or whatever. He didn't eat eat right, or whatever. It would be kind of like that's what I would equate it to. Uh, but if I could, if I could uh, control all of those things, you know, what is it? It's like his mind is just sharper. You know, like the the conversations, the jokes. He's witty. You know, he's just on top of shit. Um, and th- that's kind of what you might recognize in the person that you've now introduced to creatine that doesn't necessarily work out or isn't looking for the gains piece, but is more looking for the mental piece is like, you know, do they, do they appear sharper, you know, to you and just kind of more, more alive, you know, more vibrant, you know, and yeah. almost kind of see it in their eyes and hear it in their speech and, and, and whatever. So that one's a little bit of a tough one to, to measure outside of what you said and like studies like that. It, it, it is hard. And, you know, like it's even going down the line of peptides, like they're like boosting mental clarity. Like I've taken them before. And it's like, I don't notice until I'm off. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's oh right. shit. Like I, it's a good I, point. Yeah. So good point. Let's talk about the performance side. So we talked a little bit about um, kind of how it works and what you might expect. So, you know, we obviously we talked about the, the gastrointestinal issues that come along with it ad nauseum. We don't need to do that anymore. But the, what, what would you feel from like a performance perspective? I know when I first, when, when it was a, what is, was apparent to me was I got a really good pump. Yeah, like muscle right muscle now. Yes. Yeah. yeah, really good pump and like almost painful pumps. Muscle you know? fullness, muscle density. Yeah. Y- yeah. So like, who do, you know, that's not a bad thing. You know, no. for a lot of people, you want you and go. My to the first gym. rep is hard. The contraction is there. Yeah, you, like, you, it's it's hard to explain. Yeah. So you mean your 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 muscles just feel full and ready Absolutely. to go? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Increases like like usually sometimes the first rep of the deadlift is just like you know coming off the floor that first try, I'd be like, oh, fuck. When on creatine, I noticed like picking up things and like the bench press, couple of like lifts where I struggle in, where I would, I was pushing through much easier. Yeah. So it, it, to me, it was subtle, but it's like mm-hmm. I could, I could almost measure from like a perceived rate, uh, perceived rate of exertion yeah, um, or rate of perceived exertion, however you're, you're putting that acronym together. And that being like, what was a nine was now an eight. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and that that's market, right? That's, that's showing a, a, a change in terms of how I was evaluating intensity, um, which is important. And then on the recovery side, um, I, I always got pretty sore. Like I, I would train and, you know, it's a horrible way to, uh, to justify a workout or try to equate a workout to how sore you got. But, um, from my, from the soreness perspective, I used to get pretty sore and that would, you know, mine was, it's interesting now I'm like 36 hours later. Uh, but like I could put like to the minute was 12 hours and I would be like, it would be peaking Mm -hmm. and my soreness 
And that would last till at least 16, 18 hours later where it would start to calm down. That that time period, sort of that recovery period started to shorten up for me a little bit. That's what I- it's a couple hours. That's what I can, yeah. I can attest to. I don't train that way anymore, so I don't really equate it that way. I just know I put creatine in my- in my um, my diet and my supplementation protocol, just because I know the benefits that it does provide, but I I can't now really because I'm not working out that hard. Yeah, really put a finger on that. You're not gonna lift a car over your head. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna it's it's not gonna make you you know uh, world strongest man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The differences are gonna be um, like you guys both said, just subtle, and it's just that that extra little oomph, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that just pushes you through one extra rep, two extra reps. You know the set goes, which you know, is goes important. Which is important. You fatigue, yeah. Yeah. three the, and four sets. Yeah, that's there's the yeah. Let's not understate that, right? And that that is important in terms of making gains. So mm-hmm. if your goal is to increase strength, uh, increase uh, hypertrophy, ultimately power, this is this is, these these things are significant. The smallest percentage can give you the edge. This you know it's a, sometimes it's a game of inches and the one percent. Um, let's, let's talk about this business real quick and just kind of clear it up. We talked about the kids and, you know, moms being concerned about their, their oh, teenage yeah. teenagers being on creatine. Can we just handle that real quick? I mean, what's your answer to that, man? The answer I would say is, um, or what I typically say is, you know, it is, it's, it's typically teenage boys, um, who are, are interested in this. Um, I usually ask, well, uh, does he have, uh, does he have some, resistance training or weight training background. Um, if, uh, if the kid is, you know, never picked up a weight in his life, no, just, just it's, that's not necessary. Like first things first, you need to have some kind of, uh, experience in resistance training or weight training, um, which typically maybe 14, 15 is when you first begin, you know, uh, younger than that, maybe not the, the best idea and probably not really necessary. Um, but I think the most common situation is typically a kid who's beginning to play high school football. Yeah. Hormones um, are starting to kick in. They're, yeah. 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 So they're, they're you know, more developed. Yeah. They're starting to, uh, you know, pay more attention, uh, to, to strength. Um, and, uh, if, if the kid has some background in resistance training or weight training, uh, then yeah, maybe 16, 17 years mm-hmm. old, uh, introducing creatine is not necessarily going to be a bad thing. No, I don't think so either. There's I, not really going to be any negative side effects, non-hormonal. It's not going to make your child move. Roy rage. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I yeah. think that's a, that's a concern, right? Is it going to mess up their kidneys? Yeah. Uh, no, that's, yeah. that's not what's going to happen. I think the, to the point, it's like, is this really appropriate for your kid to be thinking about taking a, uh, an, like an ergogenic supplement yeah. in order to increase size and strength or whatever, if they're that new in the process. So, uh, I, this got is, so many newbie gains to be made from that. Totally. Position, and, right? that, and this is my point. Like, and it's also like, there's, they're in the learning process. So here's my parenting advice for this. First off, if, if your kid comes to you and wants to take supplements, um, the next question you should be asking is, oh, cool. Tell me about what you want to take. Well, why do you want to take it? Right. Ask them to give you the why, because it's going to make me huge. Okay, so th- that's a good place to start and stop a conversation, right? Because that's, you know, if your kid wants to put on muscle, that's great. But being huge in high school is, you know, probably not going to happen. But yeah. <laughs> why do you want to be huge and start to go down those those pathways? But the other thing is, like, once they've given you that information, because now you are an informed parent after listening to this podcast, uh, the next thing would be, cool, well, how many grams of protein are you eating a day? Do you know what your protein is need is for the day? Um, and how many days you're going to be working out? Like, and when are you doing this and who are you doing this with? Like, what is the fucking plan? Um, and what have they committed to and what do they have the ability to commit to? And once you see them that they've thought through this and then they have made a commitment, uh, then you can hold the creatine as a reward, you know, like, well, of sorts, like every parent knows how to play this game. Everybody's doing it with their cell phones, their kid's cell phone or their access to whatever it happens to be. The, the pad. What's the fucking thing that Call of Duty's on? I've never had one, never even seen it. Like you're talking about like Xbox, like Xbox, Xbox or yeah. something. <laughs> like that. Yeah. He was like Atari. Atari. <laughs> that tells you how out of touch I am. My Sega Genesis. Any of that shit. <laughs> My brother had a Sega Genesis. Yeah, back in the day. Uh, I never played it. Um, he did all the time. I never, I never touched the damn thing. My point of that is, is like you, you, you have these reward systems, right? Of hey, when you show me you've made the commitment to working out and. Instead of investing in the creatine supplement, why don't you invest in, uh, you know, a, 
a legit workout program yeah. or a coach yeah. or go get a consultation from somebody or whatever else. Yeah. Save your money. And once they've gone through all that, then we'll then we'll talk about it. I think that's a good pathway to get a, a human to be thinking about. And that's the reason we talked about this before, Stephen. This is the reason people are so willing to take medication because, well, the doctor said, and it's going to make this, allegedly, it's going to make this problem go away or it's going to mask this problem for me or whatever else. So give me the pill, give me the powder. That's the answer. Now, the fucking answer is you need to take better care of yourself. And there's a lot of things that come before that. We've just made it really easy for you and for you to make an excuse or go to the pillar of the powder first. So I'll get off my soapbox about that. But I hear parents ask that question a lot. I've gotten it a hundred times or more. You know, what about creatine? It's always from the the boys' parents. Um, that's not to say that female athletes or females should not be taking this, this, this supplement. I, I think quite the contrary. Everybody can benefit. You opened up by that. But when the kids, when the kids come to you and they want to, they want to take supplements, I think that's a sit down conversation. And then like a, let's put a plan in place and let's be honest, parents, you're probably not the person to be putting that, that, that kid on a, on an exercise program. Right. So maybe solicit some help, you know, reach out, you know, get some, get some advice or get some instruction. Um, and, uh, you know, just hold off on the supplements for a while. However, if your kid got a hold of it and was taking it or whatever else, don't have a heart attack outside of that was a direct, uh, you directly disobeyed what I said not to do, then fucking beat their ass, do whatever you're going to do. <laughs> so my point, like they're, they're, they're not going to be, they're not going to be injured by, by taking this stuff is really what we know at this point. And it's been studied a lot, a lot. I'd be more concerned with what they're doing on Friday and Saturday nights. Absolutely. No. Yeah. What's what's going on on the the social media platforms yeah. that uh, parents don't know about? Yeah. Again, and go back to the nutrition piece. Like, what's your kid eating every day? Shit. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, that's what it is. Ultra, ultra processed food. I think I saw something recently that was sixty seven percent of the diet of children and teens is ultra processed. Yeah, that's, I saw that exact stat, and yeah. I, I can't remember where I saw it, but yeah, it's pretty disgusting. So, again, just some perspective. Um, and creatine isn't going to kill your kid. The Fruit Loops might though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>